Okay, let's uh, begin with a word of prayer. The dear gracious Heavenly Father, we invite your spirit's presence here as we open your word together. We know, Lord, that um, we live in this world of sin and suffering around us. And um, we ask, Lord, that you can give us a heart of sympathy and understanding to help the needs of those around, uh, that we come in contact with each day. Help us to minister as Christ ministered, uh, to reach the soul, whatever means um, that you have given us, whether it's um, in sickness, um, that we often have to minister to people in whatever their need is. And we just pray, Lord, that as uh, we study together, as we look at the symbolic use of numbers, that we can always keep in mind uh, the cross and uh, the choices that we have to make each day in serving you. Be with us now through thy spirit. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, happy Sabbath, everyone. Now, um, Dwight's presentation uh, on Ezekiel 33. There's lots about Ezekiel 33 I'd like to go into, and we will go into those things um, later on. Now, last week we addressed um, the eclipse. I personally think that the eclipse has some symbols for us, but, uh, and it is kind of weird what's happening around this eclipse compared to the one seven years ago. It seems to be a little more anxiety, both on the part of people in general and also upon the part of the government. Uh, not sure why. Eclipses happen all the time all over the world. There's two to five of them every year and they never cause any problems. So not really sure what's going on. We do have some weird things, of course, happening in this world. And, uh, you know, we got this Civil War movie coming out on April 12th, and there's just lots of different things that uh, um, we are expecting a civil war in the United States, uh, according to Bible prophecy and according to the spirit of prophecy. So... So anyway, those are things to keep in mind. Now, what we're going to do here is we're just going to go back to 2018. And in 2018, so we're going back to our study dealing with when we came to understand July 18, 2020. So we remember that, of course, there was first November 9th, 2019. That was being predicted. Um, there's a measurement that was given of 391 and a half days. And um, that 391 and a half days comes from the 391 and a half years of the kings of Judah. And it's also related to Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 6. Uh, the day for a year prophecy, the prophecy of Josiah. So there's so many things that tie together. And I know for some people it's difficult to keep all of these things in your mind. Uh, it, it takes It takes time. It takes personal study going over these things. Um, now, relating this to Genesis 1, verse 14, what I really want to look at, something that came up in the other studies, uh, dealing with the Mayan calendar and dealing with calendars in general. Uh, in Genesis 1, 14, it says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Um, so the day is Yom, the night's uh, this word, Lila. Right, so it's uh, uh, just making sure, yeah, Lila. And then, um, and they shall be for signs, that's Ot, and actually it's Otot because it's doubled. For seasons, that's Moed, uh, for days, Yom, and, and then for years, right? So sh Shana. So we know that the calendar is is primarily what's being talked about here at least for the seasons, for the days and the years. That is, this is a solar lunar calendar. Now, there is a person who uh, commented on one of the videos, I think it was number 161, um, dealing with the studies of Daniel, and talking about this uh, <clears throat> Enoch calendar. It's a 364-day calendar, saying it's the perfect calendar and... I'm not sure which Enoch calendar he's referring to because there's different interpretations on how to determine the Enoch calendar. 
Some want to use a strict 364 uh, day year that repeats, um, and it doesn't take long for it to uh, be a month off by the time, you know, you have 30 or so years go by. Some have a leap year, um, you know, a, where they add a week. And then every 49 years, I think they add another extra week. Uh, because this one, you know, it's always going to be that the first day of the first month is going to be a Sunday sort of thing. Now, a lot of these calendars, of course, um, that calendar wouldn't be a lunar solar calendar. So what would be wrong with the calendar? So the Enoch calendar has, has, um, uh, four quarters and, and each quarter is going to be, yeah, so each quarter is going to be, um, uh, 91 days. That is the first month's going to be 30 days. The second month's going to be, um, 30 days. And then the third month is going to be 31 days. And then they do that for the next quarter. So they have 30 days, 30 days, 31. So how do we know that that's not God's calendar based on Genesis 1 verse 14? So if you had a 30 day, 30, 30 day month, 30 day month and a 31 day month and you did that, uh, you know, four times in a year, how would we know that that's not God's calendar? It's pretty simple based on Genesis 1 verse 14. Yeah, it's not connected to the lunar. Yeah, so it's not a, it's not a solar lunar calendar, right? So for somebody to say that 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 is God's calendar, well, it's not, right? So we know we have in Genesis one verse fourteen, there is going to be these lights in the firmament of the heaven, and there's going to be two great lights, right? The greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. Made the stars also, right? So these are God's calendar. It's a solar lunar calendar. And uh, it would also exclude the Islamic calendar because the Islamic calendar is just a lunar calendar. It doesn't it doesn't follow the seasons at all. They don't have a leap month. There's just 12 lunar months. And in order for it to line up again with the year, it takes 32 years and seven months on our calendar, 33 years and seven months on their calendar to line up. So there are lots of different types of calendars. Uh, the Egyptian calendar was a calendar where they had 12 months of 30 days. So you get a 360 day year with five days added at the end. And so you have a 365 day calendar. The Julian calendar, 365 and a quarter. And of course, uh, the Enoch calendar would end up being 365 and a quarter if you add these extra weeks in certain intervals. Um, so you have a leap year every once in a while. So you would end up with something that would fit with the Julian calendar. But again, these are not solar lunar calendars. Now, uh, the Babylonians used a solar lo lunar calendar, very similar to the Jews. Um, and eventually the Jews just adopted the names that the Babylonians had for the months. But the Babylonians never numbered the months. The Jews numbered them from the spring. Um, so they, they never talked about on a Babylonian calendar the first month or the second month. It would always be named. And then we have, uh, um, you know, other calendars that have been created, you know, the French calendar. Uh, the Romans had a calendar. Uh, the Romans had an eight day week. Um, they had a calendar that was a lunar calendar, uh, for certain things. And then, uh, they adopted the, the Julian calendar under Julius Caesar in 46 BC. And, and then the Gregorian calendar is just a modification of that. It just changes where, where you put the leap years. So it doesn't have as many leap years. So it shortens, uh, shortens the year a little bit. So it's 365.242 instead of 365.25. So it's just slightly shorter on average. So we have all these different types of calendars. Now, what ended up happening back in 2018 is, you know, I had been working through all this chronology and now we had this prediction of this date. And when I did the presentation actually back in on September 23rd, uh, 2017, Clayton was there at, at, um, Lambert Church 
And he suggested that we do something to create an online calendar um, or some kind of calendar converter. So we could put all of these dates because he said, you got all these different dates and, you know, how can we keep these straight? And so we talked about it. I did a lot of work of how I thought it should be done, but he never did end up taking on the, on the project. And instead it was Troy Van Horn who in 2018 uh, we began working on this and, and, and into 2019. So he was there in 2018, just, uh, well, I think it was actually the beginning of 2019, the end of 2018, uh, that he was there at the School of the Prophets. So him and I talked about it. He uh, created a preliminary sort of idea of how to put the calendar together. And then Iran eventually took that up with uh, Troy's permission uh, to take the calendar he created, and we modified it a little bit. We added so that you could save dates, and um, and we added some other calendars to it, such as the Babylonian calendar, et cetera. And I think, uh, can't remember which other ones we added, but we added a few anyway. So so we end up with with this this understanding of calendars. And I did write a paper uh, called... Uh, it called the astronomical basis of the calendar it's kind of an incomplete paper i need to go through it and rewrite it but the point is that we have all of these dates and and people see us use them uh, we look them up on the calendar converter now the calendar converter needs some adjustments on some of the biblical dates when you go way back in the past some of them are off um, because they prior to the exodus that the calendar was actually different or at least prior to the flood, but I would think it's, it's, uh, you know, changed at different periods of time how the calendar was determined. Obviously in, in the Exodus, they're going to fix the, the first part of the calendar so that the 10th day of the seventh month is always the 187th day of the year. Uh, prior to that, that wasn't needed because there was no day of atonement. There was no Passover. So before these festivals were given, it wasn't important to have a, a fixed calendar uh, for the start of the year for the first six months. But after that, they then had this, this uh, fixed calendar. So before that, every month was just observed. After the Exodus, only the first month of the year would be observed, and then the eighth month uh, would also be observed, the start of the eighth month. So... <clears throat> and then the ninth month, tenth month, etc. So, so these are little details that most people aren't really familiar with. Uh, it took a lot of time to figure out how this calendar worked. Um, I tried all different kinds of systems uh, to align biblical dates so that I could get the days of the week. And there is a paper I wrote dealing with uh, Leviticus 23 and the wave sheaf offering. And I think that's the strongest evidence that we have is how the, the timing of the wave offering of when they have the first Passover and, or, and the first time that the wave offering is waved and its connection to the Exodus itself. So the time that the manna falls, um, and that to me is like the strongest evidence uh, that not just that our chronology is correct, uh, but that specifically how we understand the calendar, uh, the biblical calendar, the calendar for the feasts and so forth, is correct. So very strong witness to what we have done. Now, what I want to look at today is um, something else. So I'm going to go here. Now, back in 2020, so we know that we have this November 9th date. And I'm going to, so on November 9th, let me see here. I'm going to do it this way. Um, so on November 9th, 2019, I'm going to be at the School of the Prophets. Stephen Jameson is going to be there. Odilio is going to be there. And I'm going to present this study, basically. And, and I've talked about this study. I know that some people get very confused by it. I'm going to try to do this a little more slowly 
than I have in the past. But the, to me, this is extremely important when it comes to understanding the July 18, 2020 prediction. So we already have addressed the fact that uh, we use Josiah Lich's prophecy uh, to mark July 18, 2020, right? And so initially when we did that, it was simply we had used Ezekiel to get July 18, 2020 on the Julian calendar, which would be July or not July, August. Yeah, July 31st. Yeah, it's July 31st, uh, 2020 is the 10th day of the fifth month. So we've addressed the 10th day of the fifth month uh, two weeks ago. And then we use the 26th day of the fourth month. And that comes from Josiah Lich's prophecy. And, and Stephen just suggested that we take uh, the half and instead of looking at it as a half of a month in Josiah Lich's, that we take it as a half a year. A half a year, a prophetic year, is 180 uh, years. And so, because 180 days, so day for year is 180 years. And so we counted 180 years from 1840 uh, to 2020. And we found the 26th day of the fourth month was July 18 in 2020. So, uh, but we're going to go through it a bit more slowly. So the first thing, uh, we know that, uh, so I'm going to zoom in here a bit and try to break this down. And I probably should use this other chart as well, which I'm going to look at. So here we see July 27th, 1449. Now, the Gregorian, that is a, um, a Gregorian date. Now, we know we have July 27th, 1299, but the July 27th, 1299 is a uh, Julian date, right? That's back then you have a Julian calendar. And even here you would have a Julian calendar. I'm going to go to this other chart. Is it this one? Yeah. Okay. So this one's just a little simpler. I'm going to come back to that other one because I want to address the Mayan calendar. So we know that July 27th, 1299 is a Julian date. That date, I believe, is August 3rd on um, the Gregorian calendar. But we don't use the, the Gregorian calendar in that period of time. It's not going to be till whatever it is, 1582 or something. 1582, that doesn't sound right. But anyway, <clears throat> when it, we get the Gregorian uh, calendar and we have the first woe is 150 years. And we know that Josiah Litch, he didn't have an event for July 27th, 1449, but he just he just said there's there's five months, 150 years. And then he's going to add that to the second woe, which is 391 years and 15 days, right? 391 years. So he puts that together. That's going to be 541 years. So he's going to count from July 27th, 1299 to July 27th, 1840. And then he's going to take the hour. You can see that there on the right side, 15 days and count 15 days to August 11th, 1840. Now, of course, if he had used the Julian or the Gregorian calendar and said, well, July 27th, 1299 is August 3rd, then he would have counted from August 3rd in 1840, 15 days. And he would have been off by six days, right? Or seven days. So he would have got, I think, August 18th. Right, because there's yeah, so it would have been seven days off. And that wouldn't have been the correct date. So he could have done that, but he didn't. And it's a criticism of Josiah Lich's prophecy is that, well, July 27th is a Julian date, and in 1840, July 27th is a Gregorian date, and he didn't take that into account. But when I was doing this back in 2015, and I've gone through this before, I noticed that July 27th, 1299 was the 26th day of the fourth month on the Julian calendar. It's July 27th, but it's the 26th day of the fourth month on the biblical calendar. And then I noticed that July 27th, 1840, which is a Gregorian date, was also the 26th day of the fourth month on the biblical calendar. 
And if we use the biblical calendar, we also find that July 27th on the Gregorian calendar in 1449, when the second woe begins, is the 26th day of the fourth month on the biblical calendar. On the Julian, the 26th day of the fourth month would be July 18th. Okay? That doesn't happen every year, right? That's one one in every 30 years would uh, the 26th day of the fourth month line up with July 27th or one out of 30 years, it would line up with July 18th, right? So it's going to be different dates, some different years. Um, did, you say the, did you say the biblical calendar lines up with uh, 1840? Is that what you said? So in 1840, the biblical date for July 27th, which is a Gregorian date, is the 26th of Tammuz, right? The 26th day of the fourth month. And that was the case for the Julian date of July 27th in 1299, where the first woe begins, right? It's also okay. going to be the same date on the biblical calendar. So the chances that that would happen is just one in 30. So that, so just the fact that the Gregorian date happened to be the same as the biblical date in 1840, as the Julian date was the same as the biblical date in 1299. That's just a one in 30 chance. But it, it was the case, right? And then we're going to have, um, uh, the fact that July 27th on the Gregorian, which is July 18 on the Julian, in 1449, when the second woe begins, that it's also the 26th day of the fourth month. That's unlikely, right? It's not something. So now you've got, you know, the odds of this happening are 30 times 30, right? So one in 900 chance that that would be the case. Now, the July 18 date didn't mean anything to me back in 2015. And I didn't really notice the July 27th, 1449 as the 26th day of the fourth month until 2018. So, um, cause I just looked at the Julian date. It was July 18. That didn't mean anything. So I was only concerned back in 2015 with the fact that 1299 and 1840 lined up with the same biblical date. So, so that to me was an important point that then expanded as we got into uh, 2018, and we started looking once again at July 27th, because this is going to be the date that Daniel from Brazil is going to make this prediction about October 13th, 126 days from June 9th, right, from the Italian camp meeting. And, and so we see that symbol of July 27th also happens to be, uh, um, um, Troy Van Horn's birthday. So he was always interested in J July 27. So that's one of the reasons why he was interested in this. It's something that he always noticed. We usually notice our birthdays. Now, so we took then this, uh, symbol of an hour being a half of a month and we used a half of a year. So you can see we came to July 18, 2020 Gregorian, which July 18 happened to be the 26th day of the fourth month. Now, you see some other dates down here, uh, which I'm going to look at in more detail here. So I haven't really, uh, I mean, we've done studies on this before. I haven't in this series gone through this in detail. Uh, but you can see here, again, it's the same same idea. We have the five months. And then we're looking at this hour, day, month, and a year. But the way that uh, Josiah Litch did it is he really counted a year, a month, a day, an hour. Right. That is, he's going to count the 15 days at the end. He's not going to count them at the beginning. Right. Because he's going to come to July 27th, 1840 and then count 15 days. So even though it, in the Bible it's given as an hour, a day and a month and a year, he's going to do it this way. OK. Now, he doesn't put in these other dates. So when we count a year. From July 27, 1449, that's going to be 360 years. And that's going to bring us to July 27, 1809. And July 27, 1809 is the Treaty of Dardanelles. These are actually the dates that are here are the dates that are given um, generally uh, when people talk about this history. 
That is, these are all connected. The Treaty of Dardanelles, the Collective Note, the Convention of London, and um, the um, the delivering of the ultimatum of, on August 11th, 1840, are all connected. These are the primary events connected with what happens on August 11th, 1840, marking the end of the Second World. So the Treaties of Dardanelles is signed on July 27th, 1809. Now that is a Gregorian date. In 1809, if you go to the Julian date, July 27th, it's going to be the 26th day of the fourth month. So it's going to be 12 days later. In, in that century, there's 12 days between uh, the Julian and Gregorian calendar. Now there is um, in the 19th and 20th century, or the, the 20th and 21st centuries, it's going to be 13 days apart. Okay, but back then it was just 12 days apart. So July 27th is going to follow 12 days later, and it's going to be on the Julian calendar, the 26th day of the fourth month on the biblical calendar. And then the collective note is signed on July 27th, 1839. That's going to be 30 years later that we have this collective note. And, and this is addressing what's happening with um, uh, Turkey, right? So this is all part of that that issue and um, the Ottoman Empire. And you're going to see that July 27th, Julian follows 12 days later and is the 26th day of the fourth month. Okay. And then the day, which represents a year, is going to be the Convention of London. And the Convention of London is on July 15th that this, this is signed in 1840. But it's interesting that July 15th on the Julian calendar in 1840, so 12 days later, is going to be the 26th day of the fourth month. That's going to be July 27th, 1840. So you can see a July 27th is 12 days after July 15th. And the Convention of London, that's where the ultimatum is, uh, is uh, created. And then it's going to be delivered on August 11th. So it's going to be 27 days after uh, the ultimatum is, is written and signed and so forth, that it's going to then be delivered on August 11th, 1840. Okay, does that make sense to people? Anybody have questions about that? I know if people are watching this video online and they don't understand it, they can go to other videos that I have dealing with this. And, and, and I could maybe put some links to some simple presentations on this. But if somebody's not really familiar with the calendars, it could be a bit confusing. And so then we take uh, the 0.5 years, so the 180 years. Now we're really counting from a July 27th, 1840, and you're going to count 180 years to July 18th, 2020. And that's going to be the 26th day of the fourth month. So if I count from the 26th day of the fourth month in 1840, 180 years, it brings me to the uh, 26th day of the fourth month in 2020, which was July 18th. And we already had July 18th, Julian, which is the 10th day of the fifth month. So one of the interesting points here is that if we go back to, to this, so this is the Mayan calendar uh, that I'm going to be addressing now. And, and this maybe isn't the best diagram. This one has a lot of things uh, attached to it. We, we looked at, at how the Mayan calendar which is going to begin in, um, well, let me see, how could I do this? I hope people understand what, what I just presented, but I'm, I'm going to go back to, I must have this somewhere. I just, I can't remember what diagram I would have drawn. Um, here, I'm just going to quickly go this way. I, need to, I, I, I thought I had a diagram with the mind calendar going all the way back. Well, yeah. Okay, that's what I want to do. Here's where I'm going to go. Okay, so this is an email I sent Jeff in 2020. So I'm going to go to this email. It's going to have some of these diagrams in it. Um, now, I sent it to a bunch of other people. Okay, so um, so what we have here is this. this was sent on April 26th, 
2020. So April 26th is a symbol of the 26th day of the fourth month. And it wasn't intentional that I sent it on that date. It's just that that's when I was discovering these things that week. And so I sent Elder Jeff an email. So I said, there's an amazing amount of light flooding upon us. It is at times overwhelming. It is more than a single person can take in. These chiasms within chiasms are unbelievable. What always amazes me, though it no longer should, is how God uses such divergent minds and brings such harmony. This cannot be of man. Regarding the Mayan calendar, the light has come from it. Uh, the light that has come from it has caused me a personal crisis. I don't, do not know how to interpret it. I ask for your help. First, I question myself, as I always do. And I do not want to be a person who deceives others. I'm very particular about details. And I do not want to make mistakes. I constantly check my work. And this is an obsession, especially when other people are involved. Many people have put a great deal of time and resources into this July 18, 2020 prediction. The burden of the responsibility is painful to bear. Second, I have never looked for new light. I've always only been trying to confirm established old truths. None of my work in chronology was intended to look ahead. I stumbled upon it. More specifically, any sincere study of God's word should bring new light that makes old truths shine brighter. God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more into the perfect day. As we approach July 18, 2020, I've expected that God would bring us light to confirm, clarify, or correct our understanding of our message. He has indeed done this beyond my expectations. I realize that the mind calendar becomes another matter to consider, and not an easy one at that. The snippets you have seen are only a few of what has been uncovered, and I've sought a way to explain it. On Friday evening, I presented a study on what I had just found in the Mayan calendar. Those who participated were not mathematical, and I presented it in a way that they could understand. And they said, here's a link to the study. Now, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm kind of jumping ahead here. I was going to go to this later. But I'm jumping ahead here because it has some some details that I think are important to understand. And I'm going to go back to the other slide. So we know the Mayan calendar begins on August 11th, 3113 on the Gregorian calendar. Now, I mentioned before that when I had presented this in uh, at Lambert Church, um, I presented the Mayan calendar in 2018. I had just stumbled upon it at that time. And it was in a paper uh, dealing with calendars. And I noticed that this guy said that August 11th, 3113 BC was the start of the Mayan calendar. But he was assuming a Julian date. That is, normally when we're looking at dates way in the past, we use uh, uh, Julian dates, not Gregorian dates. And so he interpreted it as August 11, 3113 BC, where this would actually be, if we put it in, in our calendar converter. And I just got to make sure I'm doing this right. So if I go back to this uh, start of the Mayan calendar, so they're going to start on 000. It's going to be, let me see here. There we go. It's going to be September 6th. 3114 BC. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't be, um, on the Julian calendar, it wouldn't be August 11th. It'd be September 6th, uh, 3114, right? And that's because the Gregorian is going to have a zero year in this case. Sometimes people will do Gregorian dates where they don't have a zero year. So it can be confusing. Uh, it's much better just to use the Julian calendar. But, uh, the point is this is August 11th, 3113 BC. Now, if I look up August 11th um, on the Julian calendar in 31, so this is also going to be the 10th day of the fifth month. Now, it's not going to show that in the calendar converter because uh, the calendar converter is not looking at each month individually. It's actually just the biblical calendar uh, put back into the past. So we would actually have to observe each month. And so if we observe the months, it's going to be the 10th day of the fifth month. So this is what I noticed. 
back in 2018 when I first crossed the mind calendar is that August 11th, that the actual date, August 11th, 3114 BC, but represented here as 3113, was actually the 10th day of the fifth month. And then when I looked at the, um, the Julian date of August 11th, it's going to be, it'll be July 16th, 3112 on the Gregorian, but it'd be August 11th, 3113 BC. And that's going to be the 26th day of the fourth month. So that was um, quite interesting that, that the Mayan calendar would, would do that, that it would give us both the 26th day of the fourth month from the prophecy of Josiah Litch and the 10th day of the fifth month by just using a Gregorian, uh, by using uh, a Gregorian or a Julian date, uh, interpreting it one way or the other. So that to me was really remarkable. So that's one of the points about that. Now, the other thing is, uh, you can see there, it says, if we go to December 21st, 2012, uh, from the start of the Mayan calendar, it's 1872000 days. That is, it's 13 periods of 144,000 days. A back tune is 144,000 days, and that's going to be 13 of those. So we get to that date that the world was supposed to end, which it obviously didn't. So it's a failed prediction. But that's where my life began. That's when I met Heidi that day. So it was a special day for me personally. And we're going to look into some of that stuff as well, dealing with um, how that fits into our structure. But anyway, the point is we have this 3113 and 2012. Now, I just want to look at uh, a connection that I noticed at the time, so back in 2018. And this relates to the prophecy of Ezekiel. So in Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12, we're going to have a verse Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. Right. So this is in the, uh, uh, this, this is going to be quoted Ezekiel 20 verse 12 and 20 verse 20 also. So 2020 and hallow my Sabbaths that they shall be a sign between me and you that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. So these are very, very similar, Ezekiel 2012 and Ezekiel 2020. Now, Ezekiel 2012 is a quote from an, another book in the Old Testament. Does anybody know which book it's quoting, what verse it's quoting? Exodus 31, 13. Yeah, so if we go to Exodus 31, 13, so notice we got the, the 31, 13 B.C. to 2012. Right. That's where the Mayan calendar is going to span of one million eight hundred and seventy two thousand days. And then we're also going to have from that we're going to have this 2020. But in in Exodus 31, 13, it says, speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, verily, my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. So in this case, it's just, it's talking in what they call the, the tense, you know. So you got first person, second person, third person. The other one is, uh, the other one is going to talk about to them that they, that they may know. Here it's going to be talking in the first person that she may know. So, so it's talking to them directly. Now, of course, that's what God says that Moses is supposed to say to them. Now, we know that, of course, this is an important verse showing that the Sabbath is a sign. And, and again, you're going to have that word, uh, ot. And, and the number for that is 226. And that represents uh, 622. 622 is an important number. It's June 22nd. So we could say this is the 22nd of June, the 22nd day of the sixth month. That's a number that's the Jeff Marks. Um, in 2011 and 2014, we also mark it in, um, in our history. It's when that, uh, the prediction of July 18, 2020 becomes international news, uh, the day after it's published in the Tennessean, the ad. 
Uh, so June 22nd becomes uh, an important symbol. There's going to be 187 days from June 22nd or 186. So the 187th day is going to be December. Let me see. How does that go? Yeah, it's going to be December 25th, 2020, when that bombing of Nashville happens. So there's lots of different things. I mean, there's 622 a.m. That's going to be the birth of Enoch. You've got um, uh, July 18th, 622 is the start of the Islamic calendar, uh, A.D., right, 622 A.D. And uh, we have 622 B.C. So that's going to be uh, where we're going to be counting. Um, that's going to be the, the Passover of um, Josiah in 622. So that's going to be an important part of this structure dealing with July 18, 2020. Um, so there's just lots of different things. That's going to be the 30 years when it says the 30th year. That's going to be from 622 because it's in 692 uh, or 592, pardon me, that Ezekiel begins his prophesying. So we have all of these different symbols. We have, you know, a Hebrew number. We have verse numbers, 3113 and 2012 and 2020, all basically the same verse. And this this is tied to the Mayan calendar. So in 2013, I noticed these connections and, and also symbolized by August 11th, right? So Josiah Lich's prophecy. Now, any questions on that? Does anybody have uh, questions about that? I mean, we can say it's not a coincidence. Yeah, I don't see any coincidence in that. Yeah. So the chances that this that this would happen, especially at that time that I found it just after I had uh, figured out July 18, 2020, the 10th day of the fifth month and the 26th day of the fourth month. And I happened to read this article uh, dealing with calendars and he incorrectly gave the date as August 11th, 3113 B.C. on the Julian date uh, for the start of the Mayan calendar. Uh, which which allowed me to to first look at the 26th day of the fourth month, and then I looked at the correct one being the 10th day of the fifth month. I mean, that just blew my mind, which, you know, it probably shouldn't have, but maybe at that time it was pretty early where we're starting to see a lot of these symbols. And I presented that at Lambert Church, and so back in, in 2018. And I have a feeling that Jeff didn't end up being at that presentation. I'm trying to remember if he was there or not. I think he wasn't there. I think he was in Brazil. But uh, um, when he came back, he was he wouldn't talk to me anymore. So there's stuff that happened while he was in Brazil. Later on, I found out that uh, Tess and Parminder had gotten to him, and there was uh, all this information about me that I shouldn't be trusted, and I was, had all these problems. And um, so... Uh, and that the July 18 prediction was not to be promoted, even though Jeff did sort of uh, talk about it occasionally, but but he was told that it was error. It was never explained why. He just, it was error. Tess didn't agree with it. So um, it should be set aside. <clears throat> but, you know, we had all of these coincidences occurring, and it was pretty hard for me uh, to ignore them. So when we get to November 9th, so that's what I want to get to here. So when we get to November 9th in uh, 2019, again, I'm going to be at the School of the Prophets. Stephen's going to be there. Odilio's going to be there. And I'm going to be given an opportunity to present just in the Sabbath School superintendent remarks, I guess is what they gave me. So the Sabbath School Superintendent remarks, I'm going to present this. I'm going to draw this on the whiteboard. And then uh, Toby is going to ask that I do another presentation in the afternoon. So I got to do two presentations. And what I was addressing uh, was the 273. Now, this is, is a little bit complicated. And so I, I don't think I'm going to get this whole study done. Obviously not today. So this is more a preamble to this study. And then to ultimately uh, how this is going to connect to uh, the idea that July 18, 2020 is going to fail. So that email that I sent to Jeff is suggesting that the, that the event will not occur 
that it'll be a failed prediction. But in order to understand that, you really need to understand the symbolism that's in this chart. And, and it's a rather involved chart, and I did go through some of it before in uh, one of the studies, but I, I just want to take a bit more time with it. So we know we're starting here on 1449, and in 1449, we're going to have a Gregorian date of July 27th. So when Josiah Litch did this, he never considered, or at least he never presents you know, Julian Gregorian or anything like that, even though he would know that July 27th, 150 years later from a Julian date would be a Julian date. Uh, but we're not looking at the Julian date. We're looking at the biblical date because that's what I believe God had marked and that Josiah Litch, even though he didn't know about the biblical date, that he got the correct date to count the 15 days from. Okay. So we got this uh, July 27th date. Let me move this over. Oops. And what you're going to see here, and I, and I know it's a little bit of math, but I really want people to understand it. And, and the more I go through this, hopefully people will see this. Now, this period of 391 years, if we go, as you'll see, we have a Gregorian date of July 27th, and we have a biblical date of the 26th day of the fourth month. And in 1840, we have July 27th, the Gregorian date, and a biblical date of the 26th day of the fourth month. And you can see it's 391 years. Now, it's 142,810 days. So more specifically, if you look at what I've written in there, it says 12 periods of 32 years and seven months equals 12 periods on that's on our calendar equals 12 periods of 33 years and seven months on the Islamic calendar. So that means that period of 391 years is a cycle that is based upon connecting the solar year uh, with the Islamic calendar. So that is the Islamic calendar. Uh, Ramadan takes 33 years and seven months on their calendar to line up again with the same date that it had had started on but if you know i mean you could start anywhere but if you if you you have a date if ramadan's on january 1st let's say you're gonna have to wait 30 years 33 years and seven months for it again to be on january 1st on our calendar now it would be 32 years and seven months on our calendar because their their year is about 11 days shorter than a gregorian year so it's it's, it's going to take that long for it to come around. And hopefully that makes sense to people. Now, if we go on our calendar, uh, 32 years and seven months is 32.583 years. And that's 11,900 days. And then it has a, a decimal, 0. 0.826561. Well, that's actually 11,900 days and 1190 minutes. So obviously the 119, which can symbolize 911 as well, is part of that structure of that 391 years, right? So one thing we know about that 391 years is that it's connected to the Islamic calendar, which is connected to the solar calendar. And that we have 300 and, uh, or 32 years and seven months now, one thing we'll know is that's not whole years. So in order for this to occur, that we have whole years, that we're not going to have like 32 years and seven months. And, and, I, and I said that wrong. So if you go 32 years and seven months, you wouldn't come around to July 1st again, right? Or January 1st. If you started on January 1st, you'd be 32 years and seven months. So you would be like July 1st, right? But but it would line up again with the solar year. Does that make sense to people? Because 32 years and seven months is not a complete solar cycle. So if, how do we do this? Let me think if I can figure this out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you here on this. So just to make sure I understand this correctly myself. So here we have the calendar converter. I'm gonna go to, um, I'll just go to 1449, okay. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take um, 
July 27th, we'll do this, this Gregorian year. So you can see July 27th, Gregorian is July 18th, Julian. You can see it's the 26th day of the fourth month. And here I have the Islamic uh, calendar down here. It's going to be the 27th day of the fifth month. Okay. So Islamic calendar, even though it's a lunar calendar, it, it often doesn't align uh, with our calendar to the day. Sometimes it'll be the same date of the month, but it's a, it's a, uh, well, it's a little bit more complicated in how they determine that. So they have sort of a fixed calendar that doesn't always line up properly with the biblical calendar. But also theirs is going to line up here with the rabbinic in this case, but not always. So sometimes can be two days off. So you're going to see that that's going to be the 27th day of the fifth month. Okay. Now, what I would have to do then is I would have to take the number of days. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the actual the actual number of days here. So I'm going to I have to get rid of this comma because this doesn't look commas. Okay. So this is the period of time you can see, hopefully, if you got to get a screen, you know, it's, it's 11,900 days. And this would represent 1,190 minutes, 0.826561. Okay. Now hit enter. And you're going to see that um, uh, we're going to have 1482. So what, what ends up happening here, this is not going to be the same day. This is going to be the 27th day of the 12th month. You're going to see it's going to be 33 years and seven months on the Islamic calendar. But the point is that the calendars are aligned to the solar year. And, that, and that's just on average, right? So, But I'm going to do this again. So I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to do it. That's the second time. That's the third time, fourth time, fifth time, sixth time, seventh time, eighth time, the ninth time, tenth time, the eleventh time. And there you're going to see um, now it's just slightly. So you notice it only got to July 26th. And that's because if we take that period of time, it's going to be. Uh, three minutes after 10. So it's going to be two hours off, right? So if I took that period of time, it's going to be two hours off, but it's, it's, uh, it's close enough, right? And that's because I don't actually have the whole decimal. So it, it probably, it, it's not actually that much off. And then you're going to see, uh, so if I just go a couple more hours, I'll just go 24. There you're going to see, I guess I have to go, I guess I have to do this. Go to day. There we go. So now you're going to see the 26th day of the fourth month and the 27th day of July and July 15th, 1840. So, but the point is now you're going to have the Islamic calendar is going to be back at the 27th day of the fifth month, right? So just like it was back in 1449. So if I move this here, 1449, you're going to see it's still going to be the 27th day of the fifth month. These are going to be the same. So that cycle of 391 years is a natural cycle of, because we have a lunar cycle, right? And we have a solar cycle. And this cycle was noticed by others. And that is if we take a day and a month and a year in biblical prophecy, which comes from Revelation chapter 9, it's going to be exactly a cycle of 391 years on the solar calendar. And, and that's going to be 403 Islamic years, right? Because they're going to have uh, in this period of 11,900 11, days, they're going to have 430 lunar months while we have 391 Gregorian months. So any thoughts on this? Any questions? Hopefully that's understandable because we're going to look at this next week in more detail. But, uh, okay, so we're going to take a look at this further. But I want people to understand this 391 years is something that is ordained of God. It's part of this prophecy. And it connects to the Islamic calendar. 
So as far as I know, we're the first ones who connected to this Islamic calendar cycle. Other people have noticed the 391 years, but they never looked at the Islamic calendar in connection with this. They just saw how the Gregorian calendar and the um, and the, the months lined up, right? So they, they understood that part, but they never thought about the Islamic calendar. And so we have, you know, the 27th day of the fifth month in 853 of the Had, a year of the Hajjij, right? That's going to be July 27th, 1449, and it's going to be in the year 256 of, of the AH, they call it. Uh, the 27th day of the fifth month. So we have three calendars that are aligning. And what we're going to look at, you know, once we understand this, is we're going to look at how this relates to the Mayan calendar. Okay, so that's what we'll look at next week. And this is going to be a preamble to showing why the Mayan calendar is significant in predicting that July 18, 2020 would be a failed prediction because we know the Mayan prophecy was a failed prediction as well. And there's other things connected to it. So any comments on this? Any final thoughts before we close with prayer? Did, did anybody understand it who didn't understand it before? Did this, this help? That's what I want to know. Did I, did I help at all? I have saw it before and I'm familiar with it, but um, reviewing it helps me out. Okay. So, and hopefully people watching the video find it not confusing. But if you do have a question, you know, you're watching this video or a comment on that, just write it down below the video um, and then I can answer it in the next study. Okay, let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the time that we have had here on the Sabbath to study your word. And uh, I pray for each person who's studying. We ask for your spirit to rest upon them and that this Sabbath can truly be a blessing. Uh, we pray for those that we love and those that are struggling in various ways. And we ask, Lord, that you can use us to minister to those around us and be with us throughout the Sabbath and in the week to come. We pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.